Hi guys, I have no idea what happened. I'm so sorry. Okay, I'm hoping that uh, the connection is better now. Hi, hi everyone. Hi, Olivia. Olivia, can you quickly tell me if my uh, video quality is okay? And uh, I'm very happy that I do make informative videos. Uh, could you please tell me if my video quality is okay, number one, if you all are able to hear me now? <laughs> okay, fantastic. Okay, and uh, if you all can hear me as well clearly, because I think the first the first video probably we were not able to hear everyone. Okay, fantastic. Okay, now that we've got this finally sorted. So great, so today's, uh, today's Insta Live is focusing on frequently asked questions, but please do not put any of your questions in here at the moment. Uh, don't put any of your questions in the comment section. Uh, there's something a little bit different that we wanna to try today, and I'm gonna quickly tell you the reason why. Uh, but first and foremost, I want to tell you that this is something I want to keep doing on a, on a weekly basis or at least once in two weeks if I can. Uh, this is to be able to answer all your frequently asked questions that you uh, ask me on my Instagram uh, direct messages. Uh, but because I'm one person, and I can't answer so many questions and a lot of questions are actually uh, repetitive. Uh, so I felt this is more efficient way of answering those questions. And if one person asks that question and 10 other people have the same, same question, uh, this would be a great platform to actually answer all those questions and, you know, we get to do a lot of sharing. We get to learn from each other at the same time. So as I was just telling you, uh, the agenda for today's meeting is frequently asked questions. Uh, but let's keep it to relevant frequently asked questions. Don't ask me about height and weight and all those questions that we've been through a lot of times because all of this has been on my YouTube. So go ahead and watch those videos. Uh, and yes, you can actually get started. I am already on my Mentimeter page. So as I was just telling you, why we're doing it uh, this way is because I want to collate all the questions. It's a little bit difficult to collate all the questions, uh, you know, if, if you're putting them uh, in the comment section and that's not what I want to do. Uh, so great, great. So I can see a couple of questions already coming in. Uh, so color, uh, color rope. Phoebe, can you please uh, direct your question uh, using menti.com uh, instead of putting it in the question section here? Uh, that would be better. Can you go to www.menti.com and use the code 85138268? Great. So I have the first question here. Uh, when will Emirates start hiring? Okay. So as I was just keep, uh, you know, as I keep sharing with everyone, uh, let's just have a quick understanding of um, when will a particular airline start hiring in general okay so we all know that aviation industry has gone through a lot of turbulence uh, you know everyone is doing their bit to get to a point where they can be profitable again and they could start flying the friendly skies so of course there's a lot to do with uh, you know geographically where the airline is located what kind of connecting flights do they have do they have a lot of international base and things like that um, and of course their economic and political conditions also play a huge huge part but thankfully uh, Emirates has actually already started their uh, recruitment process they have reached out to their ex-cabin crew and uh, they have been able to uh, bring, you know, they're already in the process of bringing their ex-cabin crew back. But at the same time, they are already in the process of hiring new crew. Uh, in fact, uh, one of my students who was from Germany, she has uh, done her video interview. She has already done her English and online assessments and psychometric assessments. And she is awaiting the face-to-face -face assessment. Uh, and that's what's going to be the next round. So uh, that is already happening uh, in a lot of countries in uh, especially in, in Europe, not so much in Asia at this point in time, but it is already happening in certain parts of the country. So I hope that answers your question. When will, when will Emirates start hiring? Emirates is already actually hiring. They're hiring fresh uh, graduates, of, I mean, you know, people who have done their high school and uh, even if they don't have, uh, you know, relevant aviation industry experience, they're, 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 they're already hiring them because my student uh, doesn't have aviation industry experience, but she does have experience. So, so I hope that answers your uh, question. Fantastic. So uh, let's move on to the next question. 
what does Qatar application means? It's the number we get or our personal ID card to stick with. Okay, um, so, uh, okay, unique uh, football memes. Could you also please direct your question to menti.com uh, instead of putting it out here? Because as I said, I want to collate all the questions and the question is going to disappear from here. So uh, I would highly appreciate if you can do that. Uh, it's a very good question, actually, what you've asked, and I really want to share. Uh, the information because I already have the information for Qatar Airways Assessment Day uh, because uh, somebody has already been through the assessment day for Qatar Airways and I, and I really want to share it and I know someone and I know they're doing it in India as well so I really want to share that information with all of you but going back to this this particular question um, so Qatar Airways application ID of course means your application ID it does not mean uh, that it's your personal ID. Uh, personal IDs are very, very different from your application ID. Uh, application ID is basically an ID that is created to uh, keep track of your application throughout the process. And it's quite straightforward. Uh, as I said, it does not mean it's your personal ID card. Uh, your personal ID card number will be given to you when you join the airlines and when you go through the training process. And it's very different because um, we could have thousands of applications, but then out of that only, you know, 50 people go through the training and they would assign the numbers according to the batches. That's how the personal ident uh, identification numbers are created. Um, so yes, uh, guys, uh, I, I want you to do this. I know all of you are here for a reason. Uh, we are here for a reason so that we can get our questions answered and I'm here for that particular reason as well. I want to answer your questions. So let's make the session a useful one for you and me and also so that I can collate all these questions. So next time when I put this live on my Instagram page or on my YouTube page, at least we will have a list of questions and that's going to be for you guys so that, you know, you don't have to, you know, uh, go through all different insta lives because as i said i plan to do this pretty much uh once in two weeks and uh i can actually put all these questions in the sequence uh on in in the comment section or on you know on my uh where you put all the caption stuff <laughs> on my youtube page so at least you will know which questions are being answered in this particular in um insta life yes um so Olivia, uh, thank you for sharing that. I appreciate that. Okay, so let's, um, going back to the question, is Qatar and Emirates hiring now in India? Okay, um, so uh, Qatar and Emirates both are hiring worldwide, yes. Uh, but from what I know, I have not really heard from anyone from India. And if you are in this uh, Insta Live today, please uh, do share it with us if you have received an application uh, response from Emirates uh, for the next uh, interview round, which is going to be the English test and the online test followed by a video interview. Uh, if you've received it, that's fantastic, but uh, I do not know anybody, anybody from India who has received uh, Emirates response at the moment for the next few rounds uh, but for Qatar Airways yes Qatar Airways has just started sending out uh, invitation for the assessment day which is the face-to-face -face, uh, interview for Indians because they have already done uh, they've done their video interviews so they rolled out their video interviews in the last two weeks and uh, I believe a lot of people from India got an invitation to, to attend the video interview and a lot of them did clear it and one of my students uh, cleared it as well and she's actually going to be attending the assessment day on I think 6th of December if I'm not wrong uh, that's the day oh by the way I will be in India actually in December and I uh, was going to share this with all of you uh, sooner or later <laughs> but since we're here I'm going to quickly let you guys know I'm planning to be in, uh, in India uh, in December uh, I'm going to be in uh, primarily Delhi and Mumbai. So I will definitely be organizing a meetup session with uh, people who would like to meet up uh, who are in Delhi and people who would like to meet up who are in Mumbai or if you want to travel, it's really up to you. Uh, but I'll, I'll definitely let you guys know the dates very, very soon. And I'm really looking forward to uh, meeting all of you. So yes, oh great. I have a lot of uh, questions come up here. So I'm just gonna go back to the questions here. We have answered Bundle Emirates. By the way, um, if you are on menti.com, you also can see the list of questions so that, you know, if that question has already been answered, then you don't have to ask that question again. Um, 
Great. Uh, I'm from Irina. I completed my Sondra interview for Qatar in October, two days after my status changed to interview pending. Candidates from other countries started attending AD. Uh, so again, it really depends uh, on the timeline of how soon can they be in your country or nearby country to do the assessment. I know a lot of people who have been given an invitation to go to the assessment day for Qatar Airways. Um, so we're still in November. I think give it a little bit of time. Uh, as long as it doesn't say that you have been rejected and it says interview interview pending in your status, I think uh, you're still in good uh, you, you're still in a good place. I would say so. Uh, don't give up hope. Uh, just be positive. Uh, let's just uh, hope and keep our fingers crossed. Of course, if you put in your hard work and you know that you've done a good job with your performance, I believe they should revert. Uh, quickly to see when you can actually attend the assessment day. Uh, I'm answering this for a person who's from Romania. Okay, I've already answered this question. Qatar uh, Airways shows video interview screening completed. Other candidates got, it doesn't mean I'm rejected. Uh, so as long as it doesn't say you're rejected, I think you should wait. <laughs> it's as simple as it is. This is what I'm gonna say. Um, I believe uh, if you are rejected, uh, they will at some point in time let you know in your application that you are rejected. So uh, don't give up hope, just wait for a while more. Uh, and you know, up until uh, they don't start another fresh round of uh, interview processes, I think you're still safe. You, would, you should still consider that they're probably still getting things organized and they should be uh, starting with the interview process uh, for the assessment in particular for Qatar Airways in India pretty soon. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, Go to the questions. Let's see what all I have answered. Oh yeah, I need to up. Mark has answered. Um, okay. Okay, I've answered this question. Uh, okay, I've answered this question. Okay, great. So I'm just going to quickly answer the question about uh, Singapore Airlines, as I can see one here. Uh, so, okay, <laughs> I really, really hope Singapore Airlines starts hiring very soon as well. Uh, but we've got to be a bit more patient here. Uh, I, I believe from the resources that I know, they did reach out to uh, people who were retrenched because I have spoken to a couple of them and they did reach out to them. So I believe they're in the process of uh, putting them back into the system at this point in time. But we also have to understand Singapore Airlines, unlike uh, a lot of other airlines, do not have a lot of domestic travel. Uh, they rely on international travel uh, a lot. And uh, Singapore Airlines is one of, uh, sorry, Singapore is one of the countries that hasn't really opened up its borders to a lot of other countries at this point in time. Um, and uh, I think once that happens and we see a lot of international travel kicking in, I definitely uh, believe that Singapore Airlines will get to a place where they can uh, start hiring. And I can say this safely because um, a lot of my friends who are in Singapore Airlines and when I tell them, okay, let's meet up and let's catch up, they have been telling me that they uh, are doing flights and they're really, uh, they're a little bit busier in comparison to uh, last time. So I think things are getting better for Singapore Airlines, just that we have to be a little more patient. As I said, uh, for any airlines to start hiring, you have to look into uh, their geographical, economical, political, and uh, you know uh, those kind of conditions as well, because that kind of determines uh, how soon they can actually kickstart the entire process. So give it some time. I'm very hopeful Singapore Airlines should get, you know, should should start doing that sooner or later but uh, yeah just keep yourself updated as to what's happening with different airlines i think that's really really important just want just want to take a quick minute to share this with all of you i think it's important to abreast yourself with uh, the news and you know what's happening in the aviation industry i know we keep sharing that on that our instagram page and uh, nada puts in a lot of effort to bring all that information to you and i know a lot of you who send me messages does help me a lot in bringing that information to all of you as well uh, so let's keep doing that let's uh, let's build this community where we can share information where we can help each other out and that's how we'll be able to actually know what's happening with the aviation industry so um, okay what type of questions can we expect in the English test will mathematics be included uh, so uh, 
If you can go back to my Instagram page at some point in time, we have actually shared uh, the online uh, test that was conducted for Emirates and what were the questions that were included in that particular test. It was more on the lines of uh, aviation related stuff, uh, but for Etihad, the test was a little bit different. So I think every airline does it a little bit differently. For Emirates, they did it a little bit differently. The focus was really on the aviation specific jargons. So they, I think they had about 30 questions and uh, and, and this is on my Instagram page, so I definitely advise you to go ahead and take a look at it because as I said, one of my students have completed that test and progressed to the next round. So she shared that information with all of us. And of course, uh, from other resources that I have, we've been able to put together all this information. Uh, th thanks to Heath and Nada. Nada have been doing a great job putting all this out there for all of you. Uh, so yes, going back to that, there are 30 questions uh, to, be, to, to be answered, I think, in 30 minutes. Um, and uh, it's all aviation related stuff so they'll give you they'll give you multiple choice uh, answers so you have to choose from a multiple choice and basically there's a question and you have to fill in the blanks so that's what I know is uh, the Emirates online test but Etihad it was a little bit different Etihad was actually a two hours test <laughs> it was a pretty lengthy test and there were a lot of uh, uh, questions to do with uh, your uh, verbal reasoning, your numerical reasoning, uh, your memory related uh, questions and stuff like that. So all that was actually part of uh, that particular test as well. So for British Airways as well, uh, I know someone who, who has shared with us that they have gotten the invitation. By the way, this person uh, yeah, this person was in Muscat, I'm sorry, yes. So British Airways actually has uh, a series of uh, uh, situational based questions that, that are part of their online test as well. Uh, so uh, it really depends on the airlines, uh, but even if uh, mathematics is included, I believe it's not going to be a very high level mathematics. It's more, le more to just test your uh, numerical ability uh, at the end of the day. And uh, as I said, you know, your memory, your verbal reasoning and things like that. So, so those are some of the things that uh, the airlines would focus on. So I hope that answers your question. Great. Um, Okay, yes, I do want to share about Qatar Airways Assessment Day because I was just speaking to someone day before yesterday and they were sharing with me that they have gone to the face-to-face -face assessment and I think this was in Copenhagen. Uh, yes, it was in Copenhagen, yes. So, uh, primarily, uh, the, the assessment day is actually not as long as it used to be last time because they have done video interviews before, they have done the online, uh, you know, uh, screening before. Uh, so at this point in time, they're focusing really on just getting to know you. Uh, so of course, there was uh, a reach test, there was uh, your BMI, and there was definitely a SCAR check round as well. Uh, but it was mainly the face-to-face -face assessment. Uh, and uh, I think if you wait for tonight's post, Nada is actually sharing the questions that were asked uh, on the assessment day. And uh, I believe this person told me that she was asked four questions. And I think I, uh, as I said, Nada will be sharing those questions today with all of you, today or tomorrow, most likely. Um, and uh, you will know, you will get to know what those questions are. But since we are on this uh, particular thing, I just want to quickly say something to all of you here. Now, of course, uh, we get to know the questions and we will be able to share the questions with all of you. But at the end of the day, you have to understand this, that you will never know what question an interviewer is going to ask you. Because when an interviewer sits down to have a chat with you, and I've been saying this time and time again, they don't sit with a series of questions. Most of the times they sit with a checklist. And the questions that they were to ask you will determine whether you fulfill their criteria on the checklist that they have. Now, this checklist is where they identify, um, are you communicating effectively? Are you able to, uh, you know, put your point forward correctly? Are you able to comprehend what the questions are? Are you able to present yourself well? Are you able to hold a conversation and things like that? So, uh, you know, revolving in our, around your communication skills, revolving around your grooming and a lot of other aspects, right? So, so that's how they actually ask you questions. And a lot of questions could also be based on your CV at the end of the day, because everyone is different, right? Of course, there are some generic questions like, 
you know, why do you want to become a cabin crew and tell me a little bit more about yourself. Now, obviously, these are very generic questions, but there will be questions based on your CV. For example, if there is an employment gap in your CV or for that matter of fact, if you've stated certain skills that you uh, are your key strengths, the interviewers can actually ask you, like, can you tell us a situation or a time where you have uh, displayed these particular key strengths or key skills that you have listed in your CV? So, so those are the some, those are some of the things that you've got to be prepared for. But as I said, you can never know the, the, the exact questions that they're going to ask you. So that is why it's really important to fall back on techniques. So understanding this question lies in what category? So is this a competency based question? Is this a question to um, get to know me? Is this a question to test my resilience? Is this a question to get to know my work experience? Is this a question to know my career aspirations, right? So once you're able to identify what exactly do the interviewers want to know by asking you that particular question, trust me, even if you prepare 50 questions, you're good to go. <laughs> and trust me on this, okay? Because then you can actually if, even if you prepare a different answer for that particular question, you will be able to actually use that answer in that particular question. And that's why I keep emphasizing on learning the right techniques and not just learning how to answer a particular question. So anyways, going back to what I was just sharing for Qatar Airways is very, very similar. If you were to look at today's post later, you will realize what I'm saying is absolutely true. There are certain questions that are based on work experience. There are certain questions to understand your personality. There are certain questions that have been asked to understand uh, your competencies or key skills. And, and that's how the questions are usually designed in any interview process. So I hope I've answered that question in a lot more detail about Qatar Airways assessment. Uh, but thank you for asking that. I really wanted to share that with everyone. Okay, um, I'm 25 and I want to give interview for Qatar as a crew, but I'm a fresher and the only experience I have is to give tuition classes. Can I become a cabin crew? Okay, so the person who's 25 years old, uh, I don't want you to answer this, but uh, any experience is good experience. And this is where I want to give a little bit hope to all those people who don't have any experience and you know I know you're fresh out of college and you know this is a question that I ask time and again you might be 21 right now but don't you have like, like probably when you start started first negotiating with your parents when you start making decisions on your own when you started influencing other people when you started uh, helping problem solve your uh, schoolmates or you know you took initiative to do something I'm sure uh, you can recollect those those situations as you know if you go back like when you were 14 or 15 because you know those are the times that we actually remember most of the times when we do something with teenagers right you have so much of life experience and all that you need to do is take all that life experience and use that in your answers and and that's why i always keep saying it's not about what you say it's about how you say it how you present yourself how you actually uh use all that knowledge, all that experience, all that information and put it together in such a way that you're able to convince your interviewers that you're the right fit. So uh, 25, in fact, uh, I was just speaking to someone and he's 30 years old and uh, he just messaged me saying that, you know, and I wanted to share that as, as a post, but I'm just going to say it right now. Um, you know, if you read the post like two days later, you will realize that he shared the exact same thing that I'm saying. Don't worry about it so much. 25. Is, is still a good age to enter the aviation industry, even if you're a fresher. And in fact, this case, you do have experience, your tuition class experience, your, you giving tuition classes is actually an experience, to be very honest with you. You just have to understand how to pick that relevant experience and present it in, in a way that you can talk about your competencies. And that's exactly what we cover in our coaching classes. So, um, you know, and, and that's one quick thing that I wanna cover here as well. I know a lot of you have been actually asking me to help you prepare with the interviews because your interview is maybe next week or your interview is two days later, but that's not how it works, guys. Uh, I, I don't believe in this kind of quick teaching because my coaching classes last for 30 to 40 hours to 60 hours if you include all, all the practice sessions because you cannot learn anything in one hour because as I said, I will not teach you how to give a particular answer. I'm going to be teaching you techniques and to be able to learn the techniques, it takes time uh, and to be able to put those techniques into practice, it also takes time. So I don't actually have any fast track courses that I run uh, that if your interview is tomorrow, I can actually help you today. Um, that's not how I run my coaching because my coaching believes in giving results and uh, the only way to see results is if you're able to implement what I teach. 
and you have to do a bit of practice before you can implement it. So just wanted to quickly share that with all of you. So I hope I've answered that question for you. Uh, so if you're 25, even if you're 27, if, even if you're 30, don't give up hope. I actually know someone who's 32 when she applied for Qatar Airways and she got through. I know someone who's 31 who applied for Virgin Atlantic and got through. I know someone who's 35 and applied for Singapore Airlines and still got through. So. Uh, 25 is still very young then, okay? Great, um, I had applied for Parag since there was no option for in, I just received the email saying my application is being reviewed and got an application ID. That's fantastic. So uh, just wanna quickly, uh, and thank you for sharing that, asking that question. I think it's a very relevant question because a lot of people, uh, if, if the interview is not happening, happening in your particular uh, place of a res, you know, residence, then uh, it's okay to apply for a nearby location. The only thing is that you will actually have to make yourself available once they select you for the assessment day. You will have to go to that particular location. So by right for most airlines, except Singapore Airlines, Singapore Airlines uh, operates a little bit differently because they only hire from Asia. So they hire from different locations and they only accept application if you are in that location. So for Singapore, they will only accept your application if you're in Singapore. From Japan, they will only accept your application if you're in Japan. But for Qatar Airways and Emirates and all these other Middle Eastern airlines, they're actually quite open to you applying from a different location as long as for the assessment day, you are able to uh, travel to that particular location and you're able to actually give the, uh, uh, you know, uh, go through the entire assessment process. So uh, thank you for asking that question. That's a very relevant question. Okay, um, okay, this is one of my favorite questions as well. How can I make an effective? Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna not say resume. I'm gonna say CV. So I'm just gonna replace that here for you, uh, curriculum vitae. And uh, you have an aviation experience of eight years with your current airline, and you want to apply for British Airways. Wow, oh, that's fantastic. Um, I believe. Uh, we can definitely help you out in this uh, and I'm very happy to have met a fellow colleague from the aviation industry. Always happy to speak to someone who's from the industry because we always get to share experiences. So uh, if you want to work on your CV, which I believe uh, should be quite, quite easy to do because you do have the necessary skills. It's just that we have to uh, place your experience uh, in such a way that we're able to make the best use of, this when, use of it when the interviewers are looking at it. And you know, uh, we probably have to work on a few questions around that as well. Why, would, why are you switching industry? Uh, sorry, why are you switching the airline if you're still employed with them? I'm not sure if you're still employed with the airline. Uh, but a few things that you could do. Uh, so for any and everyone who uh, wants to work on their CV, uh, we do have a Udemy course, which is called a CV Makeover by Nidhi Balani. Um, Udemy keeps uh, promoting the course. There are a lot of promotions going on all the time. You can go to that particular uh, course. You can buy the course. It's, it's quite affordable and uh, you can see it's a five star uh, rated course. So a lot of people have benefited from it. So once you actually uh, go through the entire course, it's 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 about an hour and a half to two hours that you will have to put in to watch all the recordings. And at the end of it, we've given you tools so that you can actually create your own ATS approved, uh, ready to print CV for any airline, okay? And this is very, very important for any airline because uh, in that videos, I have spoken about how you have to make your CV airline specific to the airline that you're applying for, right? So uh, going back to this, so that's one. Uh, second is, um, if you want me to do a CV review, uh, we do have our coaching programs. We have an economy, business and first class coaching program. And then uh, based on the program that you join, all three of them, you will actually get to prepare your CV. Uh, in the economy class, you can email your CV to me and uh, I will be able to review it on the email itself. Business class and first class, if you decided to take that up, uh, we will actually be doing the CV review with you. So uh, yeah, that's, that's how I can help you with the CV. So I hope I've answered that question for you. Um, but going back, to, going back to just saying one thing, uh, whatever you do, make sure you highlight your skills and your CV because that's what the interviewers are really looking at. Okay, uh, I believe I've answered this question. Is Qatar Airways hiring now in India? Uh, yes, they are. Uh, I know one of my students is going for an interview on 6th of December and I've just talked about the assessment process a while back. So once you watch this video again, you'll be able to get your hands on to that particular information. Uh, Right, so what to expect on the assessment day? Of course, it depends on the airline. Uh, one of my students who went for Etihad interview, uh, there was uh, a picture that was given to her and then she had to, uh, you know, they were given, uh, they were all 
made to uh, come together in a group and then everyone had to speak something uh, impromptu based on the photo that was given to them. So that's called like an impromptu round, uh, more of like public speaking. Uh, then there was actually, uh, and of course before that there was tell me about yourself and things like that. And uh, there was a group discussion after that uh, where they give you a topic and actually they give a situation, more of a situation like if you have uh, five different kinds of people and you can only take maybe three people like two elderly, uh, a kid with a family and a VIP passenger, how would you actually decide who to take and what reasons would you give to other passengers and things like that. So these are very role play based uh, group discussions and uh, after that there was uh, a final assessment which was one to one with the yeah. HR. So uh, every airline is a little bit different, Qatar Airways uh, doesn't really do group discussions. Emirates, um, I don't think last time they were doing group discussions. I can't remember honestly, uh, the process has been changing a little bit, but I know that after the video interview, from what I know now, you directly just go for the final assessment and then you'll be asked a couple of questions. There is no group discussion, if I'm not wrong, for Emirates. Um, Indigo, I believe, is still doing group discussions. Uh, a lot of Indian airlines are hiring Vistara and Indigo and uh, they do actually do group discussions. So these are some of the things that you can expect on the assessment day. So I'm, I'm just gonna quickly break it down for you. It's either public speaking, where they want to test your confidence uh, by asking you, tell me about yourself in front of everyone or they can give you an impromptu topic to speak on and they can uh, ask you to speak on that topic again it's about you know uh, checking your confidence at the same time uh, sensing how uh, how impromptu you are if you have to strike conversations with people especially your passengers uh, of course group discussions are done to check your uh, team spirit your team working abilities uh, how are you able to uh, bring the team together how are you able to uh, contribute uh, to the entire conversation and things like that and of course um, there are certain psychometric tests that you also have to go through then you have the reach test height test uh, bmi tests uh, uh, scar round, scar checking and things like that and of course then you have your uh, final assessment which is usually one-to-one -one, uh, with the uh, the higher management so these are some of the rounds that are mostly done on any assessment day okay which airlines will start recruiting uh, recruitment process for indians so actually as i said all airlines are uh, a lot of airlines are hiring in india Vistara is hiring in india indigo is hiring in india at this point in time uh, if you want to talk about international airlines uh, Air Arabia is hiring uh, for in, in, in for in Air Arabia is hiring <laughs> Indians. British Airways is hiring Indians uh, for their Mumbai base, uh, Delhi base as well. Uh, Emirates has rolled out their opportunities. Uh, Qatar Airways has rolled out their opportunities. So, so there are quite a fair bit of international airlines also coming into the picture. Okay, is Etihad and Qatar uh, hiring currently in India? Okay, I just answered that question. <laughs> so we're just gonna say Mark is red. How might, okay, I've done that. Um, how can I make an effective CV? I used to wear around 90 kgs and I worked myself get the idle weight, which is 60. So there was a time when I used to weigh 90 kgs and I worked on myself to get the idle weight of 60 and I have made it as I want to be the part of Qatar and now I want to join your classes. That's amazing! Huge round of applause to you. I think it takes a lot of effort uh, to do something like this and uh, reducing 30 kgs is, is, is really bravo, I have to say. So uh, very happy for you. I'll be happy to take you in my class and uh, I'll quickly share with you at the end of uh, this live session as to how do we go about doing, doing our coaching classes. So uh, stay tuned for that. Um, it's, it's pretty simple, uh, but uh, uh, you know, we, we just want to make sure that we get to know you a little bit before we put you in our class because I, I don't believe in just taking people in like that. I really need to know what are your challenges and I need to understand whether I can work with your challenges at the same time, right? So that's important. I'm not able to find the recruitment of Qatar Airways for India, of course, because they're not, um, the, the recruitment for an online application is closed at this point in time, so you will not be able to find it. Uh, you have to keep a lookout on our page on our instagram page whenever there is an opportunity we'll definitely roll it out so uh that would be the best thing to do so uh onati doshi uh can you please send your question to um menti.com and i will take it up from there uh nawab sharuk uh can you please do the same uh unique dot food ball memes can you please do the same uh nikki f H I M I. Um, all of four of you, uh, could you please direct your questions to 
menti www.menti.com and as you can see i've pinned the code 85138268 and uh, i will answer your questions there okay can i apply for some other location from india yes of course you can um as i said i've just uh and I've, I've just answered this question, but I'll quickly do it while waiting for the other questions to come up uh, from the rest of you. So, um, okay, thank you. <laughs> I'll take the compliment from my hair. Okay, so going back to the question, can I apply for some other location if I'm from India? Uh, yes, you can, of course. Uh, the only thing that you need to put into consideration is that you will be taken as someone who would be able to appear for your final assessment in that location. So if you can travel all the way to Copenhagen, then you can actually apply for Copenhagen location as well. Uh, but you have to go for the assessment. Uh, but I'm not too sure if uh, it will cause any complications in, in your review, but you will be able to apply. Uh, because I know someone, I mean, within Europe, people are able to travel from different cities. So I don't see a reason why it should be an issue. I mean, you can try, uh, but highly suggest that you should apply from your location because at the end of the day, you're confusing the system. And I don't see a reason why you should do that. You know, uh, when we do things like this, that is why the entire recruitment process gets so delayed. We keep applying four times, five times, six times, and then we expect uh, everything to be really smooth. And I don't think it works like that. You know, if you're burdening the entire recruitment system by constantly logging in, constantly trying to figure out, uh, and you know password issues this this issue this issue that issue um, i i feel if some of us are able to smoothly apply then i think others should be able to do so as well uh, i think we just have to be a little more conscious about what we're doing when we're putting in that application process so uh going back to answering the question you can apply but my advice would be to not to because you're going to be confusing the system and of course you have to travel all the way to that particular location so i'm not sure if that would work for you from the financial standpoint okay um i just completed my emirates application and my bmi is a bit low as i weigh uh, certain kgs and i am this tall i might be overthinking but do you believe this would be a problem uh so problem is a very negative word uh if all of you are here with me today let's replace it with the word challenge i always believe that you should say positive things and not say negative things and choice of words is is really important when you are answering to your interviewers. So make a conscious choice to use positive words and not negative words. Okay, so uh, of course, uh, having a, a BMI in a healthy range would, would be always better because there is a reason why the airlines want you to have a BMI in a certain range. And I believe I have made a YouTube video on this. I want you to go ahead and check it out. Uh, but there are a lot of, lot of reasons for it, okay? It's not just about the looks. It's really about you being able to carry out the safety and security procedures, you being able to push the door and close the door, you being able to carry heavy passengers out from their seats, you being able to carry uh, safety equipment, you being able to help passengers with their bags. Um, and while you're doing all of that, uh, you've got to make sure that, you know, uh, your health is taken care of. Uh, so that's why uh, it, it's not aesthetics, it's, it's for certain medical reasons that the airlines want you to have a healthy BMI. And of course, healthy BMI also means uh, that overall you're healthy. So in terms of, you know, having any, uh, any unfortunate situation will your health uh, will not occur at a later stage. So that would be a, a, a criteria that that will help them determine whether you're the right candidate uh, to be put into this job. So I really hope I've answered that question very diligently because this is very important. Okay, so my English is weak. How do I improve it in 10 days for assessment day? I, I am sorry, <laughs> but uh, okay. So one, it really depends on uh, where are you when you talk about uh, your English proficiency. Uh, we do actually uh, 
provide a test if you are part of our newsletter. I believe uh, the fourth or the fifth email uh, that you get from us is to take an English proficiency test to be able to see where do you stand uh, from I think uh, B a1 all the way to c1 uh, the proficiency and it's based on the european framework and uh, you can take that test and you can find out where do you stand uh, if you're really at the bottom i don't think 10 days is enough to actually bring yourself up to a level where you're proficient in english uh, our coaching programs that we provide for speaking english in you know with confidence is for about two months um, if your proficiency is already sort of there and you just need to get to a level where you could communicate a bit more effectively we could do that in one month as well um, please go to one of my posts where we've talked about speaking English with confidence and there's a number of our English trainer Kojatsi uh, get in touch with him he's currently running classes as we speak our fourth batch is currently running uh, so do get in touch with him and see how uh, he can help you so as i said it really depends on where you are so going back to what i was just sharing with you if you guys want to get our um, series of emails we have five emails where we have uh, you know uh, uh, shown you how you can uh, test your bmi you can test your english proficiency you can test a couple of other skills uh, do go ahead and uh, watch our webinar sign up for our seven secrets webinar which is on our home page you'll be directed to uh, a two hours webinar Trust me, it's worth it because in the first one and a half hours, we've shared seven tips uh, from CV to grooming to communication to LinkedIn, which is your prof professional networking, to how to be more confident and things like that. And in the last half an hour, we've spoken about uh, what do we do in our coaching classes, and you know, uh, we've broke, we've given you a breakdown of the pricing uh, of what we do in our coaching classes and how much uh, how much investment uh, you know you would want to make if you want to join either economy business or first class but once you sign up for that you also become part of our newsletter and uh, you receive a series of five emails and one of them is basically the proficiency uh, test uh, that you get to take uh, to determine your english okay so let's go back to the question oh by the way uh, Start listening to news and start talking to people in English. I think that's the first thing that you could do uh, to get that confidence at least. Okay, what exactly do they can, uh, how exactly do they conduct the SCAR test? Where all do they check? Okay, so uh, for most airlines primarily, as long as the SCAR is visible when you were to wear their uniform, that is when it becomes a concern for them because it is all about the image. But having said that, if you have a big scar somewhere on your arm, and uh, this is information that I'm sharing straight from Carmen, because I spoke to her, you guys know that she is an ex-recruiter uh, for Emirates, uh, someone that I highly, highly recommend. Please do go to her Insta page. She has, you know, spoken about airline specific information and uh, Julia, of course, uh, Julia Josh talks specifically about uh, Qatar Airways quite a lot. So do go to her page. Komal talks a lot about Indigo because she's from Indigo. I talk a lot about Singapore Airlines at least last time when they were hiring because, you know, uh, we do bring that relevant experience from the airlines that we are and we feel that would definitely be an added advantage to all of you. Uh, but yes, going back to what I was just sharing, Carmen did share with me that, uh, so, so okay, let's break it down. Number one, if you have a scar which is visible when you were to wear the uniform, that would be a concern. Uh, of course, if the scar is really small, it, it can be hidden, uh, you know, you could wear a stocking or, you know, it wouldn't be such a big issue. They would sometimes like go off it. Uh, but if it's a, it's a huge scar and it would probably affect your appearance because it's all about personal image, how uh, you represent the company is all about your personal image as well, because that is what their image is all about then it becomes a concern for them and and that is uh you know that is something that they will bring to your attention and is the reason why they wouldn't select you but having said that even if you have like a big scar and it's not visible when you wear your uniform it could be a concern because again when you are not wearing a uniform and you're outstation and you probably decide to wear a short sleeves t-shirt that scar or tattoo might be visible so i think uh I think it's very subjective, but again, if you have a great personality, I think if you can impress them with your personality, uh, they could close one eye because I know of people who've been through different airlines who have had a scar and they have successfully 
uh, being recruited. So, so I think I think it really boils down to also how much confidence do you have, and how do you project your yourself and your personality at the end of the day, and how do you build build that rapport with your interviewers, uh, and uh, how do they do the scar test? Is basically so uh, they were obviously look at you a little bit closely to check your scars. I remember last time they were put a white light. I don't think they do that right now, uh, but they look at your scars pretty closely. Uh, but at the same time, for a lot of different airlines, they would ask you to submit your photos without makeup. And uh, they would ask you to, you know, submit makeup, makeup uh, like maybe half of your hands, half of your legs, your face, your back, uh, the neck and all that, because all these areas are visible when you're gonna wear the uniform. So that's another way of uh, doing the scar test. Yes. So I hope I've answered that question. Um, okay, my age is 19 and what is the process that I should follow to become a cabin crew? Great. Uh, so uh, first and foremost, if you're 19, uh, I believe you might still be in the process of uh, finishing your um, college education. So continue to do that. Uh, if you can gain some experience on the side by doing some part-time work, that will be fantastic because uh, that will be an added advantage for sure. Uh, but even if you can't, that's fine. Focus on your education. Um, of course, based on the airline uh, that you can apply for, based on your age, you can start applying. Uh, for certain airlines, they hire, even if you're 18, for certain airlines, uh, they, they would hire you only when you become 21 and there's a reason for it because they need to apply for your work permit especially if they're going to hire you over to uh, their country uh, they need to they need you to have certain education they need you to have certain age to be able to apply for your work permit and stuff like that uh, so that's one second uh, if you want to already start working on your interview preparation you can join our coaching classes again uh, very simple process you just have to go to the website uh, on the main page itself of my website which is in my uh, bio in my instagram the first thing that you would do you would see is uh, watch our seven secret webinar just sign up for it it's absolutely free we don't spam you we only send you few emails and newsletters whenever we're doing webinars and things like that it's all information and i believe it's good information that you can benefit from and you will be directed to a page where you can watch the webinar you can get to know about our coaching classes uh, at the bottom of the page itself we've talked about the details about the coaching classes the the cost and everything and then if you think this is for you you can actually book a coaching call with us which is absolutely free um, and you know uh, we can understand your challenges and if you are ready to make the payment we can actually tell you how you could go about doing it so, so that's uh, that's my advice to you if you're 19. Okay, um, I have a tattoo and I got a call from British Airways they said because of the tattoo they rejected me they said apply next year we'll Will there be recruitment next year? I do not know if there will be recruitment next year, but if you are rejected because of your taru, and since you know this, I highly advise to take some action at this point in time. And again, we have uh, uh, an aesthetics doctor in our panel who, if you decide to do your uh, tattoo removal, laser surgery, or whatever procedure they recommend, they will actually give you a 10% discount on the entire process uh, because they are uh, you know, on our panel with us, Dr. Debrat Show. If you go to back to my Instagram post, you will be able to definitely find um, him. And uh, he, has, he does international consultation. He travels internationally as well. Uh, in India, he has about seven or eight clinics and uh, very well-known uh, doctor. Uh, and a good friend of mine so I highly recommend that you do take some action and don't just leave it there because if you're gonna go next time for the recruitment you will get rejected so please 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 do that I do not know if British Airways will come next time but I believe um, if they set something in motion and you know uh, there's always this turnaround you know some crew who come in some crew leave so obviously they have to uh, they have to have this turn over and uh, and I believe they should they should come back uh, next year or next to next year <laughs> what if my BMI is slightly underweight I have just answered this question so uh, I would recommend that you guys uh, listen to that uh, but of course uh, something that I did not mention it is um, two things if your BMI is underweight uh, you can bring your BMI up. I have done it before and I have done it with the help of my sister who is a fitness trainer who can actually advise you uh, fitness my ways. Uh, you'll be able to see her in you know on some of my posts I've tagged her 
Um, so you can reach out to her. She can help you uh, with your BMI related concerns and she can help you how to attain that BMI with proper diet and proper exercise because I have done that. And uh, fortunately in my case, uh, I did it after my interview, but you have the time to do it before your interview. So I don't see a reason why you should not do that. So please do it. Okay, uh, how much do you charge for your coaching? I have just shared the entire process with you guys. Uh, we do have different packages. Um, just go to the website. And in fact, let me, let me share it with you guys so it's a bit more easier for all of you here since we are on that topic right now. I'm just gonna turn the camera around. So do me a favor and if you want to know about the coaching programs, you can go to my website, which is nidhi-bilani.com. Uh, the link is in the bio on my Instagram. Seven Secrets, no recruiter will tell you. Go ahead and fill in your details, your first name, your email address, your employment uh, status, and click on watch the Seven Secret webinar. And you will be directed to a page. So I'm just going to employ... I'm definitely employed. <laughs> okay, so click on watch and it will take you to this particular page where we have listed down everything that you need to know about our coaching programs. We've we'll listed down the courses, we've listed down what exactly do we do, uh, what do we teach you, uh, how much do you need to invest and all of that. So um, you can book a coaching call with us if uh, this is something that you would like to do and we'll be happy to take you through um, your questions and understand your challenges at the same time. Great, so let's go back to the rest of the questions. Okay, uh, so it's coming up to be 6.02 p.m. Uh, let's set a de deadline because otherwise, uh, you know, we'll, uh, we can talk for hours, I know. <laughs> I can talk for hours. So um, let's finish it off in another uh, five minutes. I'm not gonna be taking any more questions. Uh, I'm just going to be answering the six questions that I see on my screen at this point in time. So I'll not be taking any more questions, but don't worry if you're still here and your question has not been answered, do join us the next time because I'll be happy to take up your questions the next time. And uh... okay, I'm just going to, so yeah, Una Doshi, I've answered your question. Uh... Okay, uh, Jangit, you have to ask me a question there. Uh, okay. Great, so I think I've been answered every question. Um, yeah, so I, I just told you what do they do for SCAR test. For Qatar Airways in particular, um, they ask you to actually submit your photos uh, with your hands, with your legs, without makeup, uh, with your front and, and the back. Uh, you know, when you wear uniform, all the places they believe are visible. So that's what, that's what exactly, that's exactly what they do, okay? So, um, I do see that some of you have been asking me questions in the comment section, um, like Vivek. Um, I will not be answering those questions there. I'm only answering the questions on uh, www.menti.com. Uh, so you can use the code 85138268 to put in your questions. But actually, at this point in time, I will not be taking any more questions. So I only have eight questions more. So I'm just gonna answer those and we'll call it a day for today at 6.15 p.m. so that we can meet again, okay? Great, uh, so let's say yes to this question. How do you apply for your newsletter? Yes, so again, uh, very simple. Uh, you can, as I just explained, you can go to my website, sign up for the seven secrets. You will automatically become part of our newsletter. Uh, we will start sending you our series of emails uh, and our series of emails are quite useful. Uh, we have uh, proficiency, English proficiency tests to how to check your BMI tests and all those things that we do for you. So uh, do that and uh, yeah you'll definitely be start receiving emails from us uh, uh, from there on. Okay, so is it fine for a lady candidate to wear a long sleeve t-shirt for Qatar Airways Assessment Day? Um, of course, it's okay for you to wear a long t-shirt uh, for your assessment day, but I always say this, I think you should, uh, you should wear something quite similar to, so for example, if you go through the Qatar Airways photo requirements, you'll be able to see uh, what they want you to wear so if you can wear something closer to that you will look quite identical to the photo that you have put in or for that matter of fact if you can visualize them 
in the role of the cabin crew of that particular airline. Of course, uh, I, I don't recommend you to wear jazzy colors and things like that. So yeah, you can definitely wear a long sleeve uh, t-shirt for Qatar Airways Assessment Day. Uh, okay. All right, so grooming related questions. <laughs> there is a video that I have made on my YouTube video where I've talked about, uh, you know, what kind of nail, nail paint should you use? Uh, what clothes should you wear and things like that? I highly recommend that you guys should go and watch it. Um, but as I said, if I were you, I will wear something that cabin crew of that airline wears so that I can make them visualize in that role as closely as possible. So that's what I would do. Oh, thank you. That's a very sweet comment. I appreciate uh, that you feel that I'm approachable. Uh, as I said, uh, this FAQ is my humble attempt to be able to answer all your questions on my Insta DM because when I open my DM, I, I feel really bad because there are so many people and so many questions and I feel that um, I'm not doing justice. <laughs> There's a reason why you guys follow me and I, I want to be able to uh, help all of you at the same time, but it's not possible for me to do that because when I start answering your questions, you guys start asking more questions and then I end up talking to one person for at least 15 to 20 minutes and then I can't practically do that. I do have a full-time job uh, from nine to six. I, uh, I'm a real estate agent. I have a coaching program that I run over the weekend. So there's a lot that I do and I try my best to do whatever I can. So, so that, that's the reason there's YouTube uh, videos that we make. There's a lot of Instagram posting that we do. So please, please use that and leverage on that so that you, know, you all can benefit from it. Okay. Uh, there's a coaching named Frank Finn. Is it worth joining because there are some red flags regarding it? Uh, to be very honest with you, uh, if you ask me about any other coaching class, I, um, I have not been through their coaching program. So of course, I can't tell you whether they're good or they're not. I can only tell you about my coaching programs. Uh, of course, I do support other people that I feel are genuine. I know there are other uh, people who are running cabin crew coaching programs and I do know that these people are genuine and I do support them because you would see me uh, reposting their content on my Instagram. Uh, there is uh, Kanika, there is uh, Komal, uh, Juliana, uh, you know, Julia doesn't do coaching, but uh, you know, yeah. So, uh, I mean, she doesn't do coaching, coaching, paid coaching, but she coaches in her own way, which is brilliant as well. Uh, but you know, um, honestly, I've never attended uh, Frank Finn's coaching and I really don't know what it is all about and what do they do. Uh, but in all honesty, if someone tells you that they need one ear to coach you, um, which they do, I don't think it's worth your time. Um, and obviously not worth your money from that perspective because you don't need one year to understand the techniques that you need to know to be able to clear the interviews and to be able to clear interviews for aviation industry in particular you don't need to have all the aviation related knowledge because they will not really ask you those kind of questions because that is exactly what they cover in these one year long coaching classes so i don't really support that particular idea and because of that i believe uh, frankfurt is not really on the list of my uh uh, favorite coaching programs and uh, yes, I agree with you. I have heard uh, a couple of um, I mean, I've, I, there are some red flags <laughs> so uh, It's not in the list of my recommendation for sure Right, um, so what should be the basic skincare and self-care? I think that's a brilliant question um, I wish this new skincare that I am on is something that I would have done a few years ago and I've been talking all about it. Um, a couple of my students are already on that skincare as well and uh, it's from Dr. Secrets. Uh, it's a local product based out of Singapore but it's an amazing, amazing product. It's working very well for my skin. It's a one-step solution because they have everything and you can actually see results because they claim that you can actually have foundation-free skin. And I have been sharing my photos of uh, you know no foundation no makeup on uh, my social media platform so I, I do believe it's definitely benefiting me and I really hope that it benefits you if you want to know more about it just uh, you know uh, let me know but let me know on my new account uh, which is the Lionista and that's something that I quickly want to share at the end of uh, answering the rest of the questions with all of you but apart from that uh, of course you have to determine what your skin type is then based on that I would be advising you what products you can particularly use because some people have dry skin some people have combination skin some people have um, oily skin uh, so I think uh, from that perspective the skincare practices might differ a little bit uh, but I highly recommend this set of products Dr. Secrets I think they, that that's a really good product 
I heard Qatar doesn't take Indigo crew. Is it true? Okay. <laughs> um, we've gone through this a lot. Um, I've heard this. I honestly won't be able to comment on this because I've spoken to Indigo crew before and uh, some of them said it's okay they've been through the interview some of them said uh, they had bad experience I wouldn't say bad experience they did not have a very favorable experience so um, I'll be honest I, I've only heard rumors I don't have an exact answer to answer to this particular question I'm, I'm still doing my research on this Great, so that's that's the last question. Actually, it's not a question. <laughs> Thank you. I'm, I'm really happy that you guys do take me on as a role model. But at the end of the day, uh, I'm here as a coach. I'm here as a mentor. Uh, I would like to be a role model if you, uh, if you like how I present myself, how I take care of myself. And if that benefits you, I'm very, very happy to know that. Uh, but I really like what we did today, and that's fantastic, because now at least I have a list of questions, uh, you know, that I can, uh, share later so what i'm going to be doing for all of you is i'm actually going to be saving this instagram live on my instagram page and at the same time i'll be putting it up on my youtube um, and you know uh, you can watch it either or and i'm going to be putting up all the questions that i've answered in this particular insta live uh, so that you know you guys would know exactly <laughs> what was done today and you don't have to watch you know you don't have to think that you don't you have to watch this one and one hour plus thing and you don't know where this is going so i think we have a very set understanding of what we did today i'm really happy about this so thank you first of all for being so proactive and uh, taking instructions and not just bombarding all the questions here and actually putting your questions on menti.com uh, before we actually end this session, uh, first of all, thank you for taking time out. I'm very happy that you guys uh, took time out to attend this Insta Live because it goes to show that you are motivated uh, to do something towards your journey of growth and you're ready to invest your time. But at the same time, if, if you believe that you're ready to invest money and if you feel that you need coaching classes from us, all you have to do is go to our website, which is... Uh, HTTPS www.nidhi-bilani.com, which I have just shared with all of you. And when you go there, and, it's, and the link is in my bio as well, uh, you'll be directed to our Seven Secrets webinar. Please do, do sign up for it because trust me, it's worth watching. And at the end of the webinar, we have shared uh, what do we do in our coaching classes and how do we coach. And we've also listed the entire uh, process on the page itself. Uh, when you do that, you also become part of our newsletter uh, where we will be sending you uh, emails that would benefit you from the perspective of uh, proficiency tests if you wish to take, BMI tests if you wish to take, and certain other things that we do. Uh, but at the same time, we would also uh, be sharing uh, a lot of information in terms of releasing new YouTube videos or you know just giving you tips and pointers along the way so that uh, we can be constantly there with you in your journey and that's exactly what I want to do I want all of us to grow together that's what I, what I always always say I really want all of us to grow together that's that's all I want from the social media platform um, so yeah let's be there for each other let's bring this community up uh, let's share this insta life uh, if you know someone who can benefit from this please do tag them in the comments uh, so that uh, they can also go back and look at this so thank you once again at 614 uh, and uh, we've come to the end of the live session oh also i want to quickly share with all of you um, i'm in the process of creating an ebook uh, which is where i'll be sharing a couple of these techniques uh, just as a starter for you guys to practice so uh, we'll be putting that out really really soon and uh, uh, from there we'll be also organizing a couple of webinars for people who are interested in buying that particular ebook because in the webinar the things that i'm going to share would be based on that ebook uh, so so that's 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 the connection there but uh, yeah we'll share all the details uh, soon so keep in touch everyone and uh, keep sharing but if your questions have been answered do me a favor instead of asking me on instagram uh the same question let me know that your question was answered here i think that would make me feel better so please 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 do that and of course if you have updates regarding the interview process if, you, if you've been through the interview process and you would like to share that with me do that because that helps me in sharing it with other people so yeah i think that's about it 6 15 uh let's be punctual <laughs> so we're gonna end this for today uh take care everyone thank you for joining once again and uh wherever you are please stay safe uh, i hope your families are safe as well and uh, all the best uh, for your preparation for your upcoming interviews bye guys
Okay, I know I have not been able to see the comments, <laughs> but um, as I said, I will not be answering the questions from the comments. I'll be only, only answering questions that have been submitted through menti.com. Uh, so, so whoever uh, has put in their questions in today's live under the comments section, uh, keep them with you because when we do this again, I think two weeks later, that's my plan. Uh, please put them up as instructed. Okay, I think as a cabin crew, it's really important to follow instructions, a very important part of who you are. Uh, so do that. Okay, guys, bye. I can keep talking forever. Bye, 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 bye. <laughs> Take care, everyone.